Hi everyone, my name is Warda and I'm a STEM Scholar Mentor. Today we'll be going over the first unit of Algebra 1, Numbers, Operations, and Properties. Fortunately for you, the fir there's only one lesson in the first unit of Algebra 1, which is identifying properties. So just to refresh, we'll go over the, prop the general properties of addition and multiplication. The first is the commutative property, which essentially states states that no matter how you rearrange your your numbers in an equation it'll still remain the same um, it'll still have the same answer so here we have a plus b equals b plus a and a times b equals b times a so if we were to put these substitute these with numbers let's just say a equals 2 and b equals 3 um, we'd still get the same outcome. So 2 plus 3 equals 5, and 3 plus 2 also equals 5. And it would be the same down here. 2 times 3 equals 6, 3 times 2 also equals 6. So this property checks out. The next one is the associative property, which basically states that no matter how you group your numbers in an equation, you'd still have the same outcome. And this is only for addition and multiplication. The final one is the distributive property, which states that no matter how you align your equation in addition and multiplication, you'll still end up getting the same, um, the same outcome. So here we have a and a times b plus c, b plus c in parentheses, is equal to ab plus ac. And down here it would be the same outcome because it's just aligned differently, but it's still the same variables. Next, we'll go over the properties of equality, addition and in addition and multiplication. The addition property of equality states that the addition of the same number or expression to both sides of an equation is permitted. So here we have an equation, 2x minus 6 equals 2. So we would add 6 on the left side of the equation to cross out minus 6. But we also have to do the same on the, on the right side of the equation to equal out the the equation. The multiplication property states the same thing but with multiplication. So here we have 2x divided by 6 equals 2 and we would add, uh, multiply 6 on the left side of the equation to cancel out divided by 6 so we have to do it on the other side as well. The next properties are the inverse properties of addition and multiplication. The addition property states that the additive inverse of a number or expression results in zero under addition. And the multiplication one states that the multi multiplicative inverse of a number or expression results in one under multiplication. So this basically means that the inverse or the opposite of a number would equal to zero for addition and one for multiplication. Let's go over some examples. So here, we just substituted a, we just substituted 4 for a in the first equation here. So instead of negative a plus a equals 0, we have negative 4 plus 4 equals 0. And this checks out because negative 4 plus 4 is basically 4 minus 4. So let's take it one step up and use this equation instead. So let's substitute x as 1 and y as 3. So our equation is 1 plus 3 plus negative 1 minus 3 equals 0. So let's simplify this. 1 plus 3 is equal to 4. And we know that every time a negative number is subtracted by a positive number, it's equal to another negative number. So this is negative 4. So now we have our equation from the previous example which we know is equal to zero. So this checks out. Now let's move on to multiplication. We'll use, um, we'll use four as our variable again. So here, we'll use this equation up here. So f our equation is four times one fourth equals one. The reason this checks out is, so let's solve it actually. So, f but first we'll start off by multiplying the numerators. 
So 4 times 1 is equal to 4. So now our equation is 4 over 4, which is equal to 1. So this checks out. Next, we'll take it up a notch, and we'll use this equation down here, and still we'll use x as 1 and y as 3. So our equation is 1 plus 3 times 1 over 1 plus 3 is equal to 1. So let's simplify this. 1 plus 3 is equal to 4. And 1 over 1 plus 3 is equal to 1 fourth. So it's 4 times 1 fourth, which is our equation over here. So we know that this is equal to 4 over 4, which is equal to 1. So this checks out. Now, I want you guys to do some equations on your own. So feel free to pause the video and take some, take a, take, take some time for yourself to do it. Okay. So these are, these are the answers that you should have gotten. A should be 5, B 12, C 5, and D negative 2. So let me explain. So for A, we have 2x plus 8 equals 18. We subtract 8 on both sides. And then we get 2x is equal to 10. Divide by 2, and x is equal to 5. Fairly simple. For B, we have 3 fourths 3 fourth x minus 7 equals 2. We add 7 on both sides. And we're left with 3 fourths x equals 9. So now we have, to sub we have to divide 3 fourths on both sides. And when we divide fractions, we use the reciprocal, which is basically 3 fourths flipped, which would be 4 thirds. And we multiply that on both sides. 9 times 4 thirds, 9 times 4 is equal to 36. 36 divided by 3 is equal to 12. Next is C, which is 3x plus 5 equals 2x plus 10. So this might look a little tricky, but you just solve it like anything else. So first, I'm going to start with subtracting 5 on both sides because I don't want to deal with any negative numbers. So that would leave us with 3x equals 2x plus 5. Now this side is looking a little heavy, 2x plus 5. So we're going to get rid of the x here. So that would be subtracting 2x on both sides. This side cancels out, and we're left with x equals 5, because minus 2, this would be 1. 1x one equals 5, so x equals 5. Our last equation was 4 times x plus 5 minus 12 equals 2x plus 4. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to um, distribute the 4 to x and 5. So like this, and 4 times x is equal to 4x. Four, 4 times 5 equals, is equal to 20, so it would leave us with 4x plus 20, and then the rest of the equation is still there. So this part can be simplified further. So we're going to do 20 minus 12, which is 8. So our equation now is, is simplified, and it's 4x plus 8 is equal to 2x plus 4. So now I'm going to subtract 4 on both sides, which leaves us with 4x plus 4 equals 2x. We're going to have a negative number, but that's nothing to worry about. So now this side is heavy, so we're going to subtract 4x from both sides. 4 equals negative 2x or negative 2x equals 4. So we're going to subtract negative 2 on both sides, which leaves us with negative 2. That's it for today, and thank you for listening. If you have any questions, you can reach me in my email here, and if you're looking to have um, do any additional practice, you can use JMAP or Khan Academy.